for doing amazing. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. I'm really, really excited to have you on my channel, you know, because again, I've heard your story before and I was just like, wow, <laughs> super blown away, you know, at how, um, you know, deep, um, you know, your, your story went basically. And I'm so inspired as well by your journey. I know that you're seven months um, into the faith as a, as a disciple of Christ. And wow. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, so do you want to kind of tell us a little bit about yourself first, so at least then everybody knows who you are, where you're from, and what you're about? Yeah, so like Stephanie mentioned, I've been a disciple for seven months now, and it's been quite a journey, a beautiful one at that, and um, just a little bit about myself, I'm a writer, currently working on a book called The Transformation of the Hearts, where you guys will have a sneak peek into what it's more about as I share my testimony today. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm 23 years old, turning 24, <laughs> very young, but I'm feeling very, very mature in the faith. So I'm grateful for God. Tell us one thing um, that God has brought you through over the last couple of months, like one thing that stood out to you the most. He's got me through my pride. Uh, my pride was expressed through in the past explicit encounters with my lust, um, my emotional dependency, my emotional impurity. And so he's shown me how that can be um, centered around infatuation. It could be centered around um, infatuation with self um, or like feeling so full of myself. But in reality, also it can be the total opposite, um, the total um, opposite of the spectrum where it's self-doubt my anxiety really festering and showing that my my pride of nature so he's been really exposing that in a lot of ways through my anxiety uh, most most mostly than others and um just putting me through humbling situations where i had to really just dig out um and just get through it with him wow i've never i've never heard of that before in terms of like well, the way you just put it in terms of infatuation with self and then it can, you know, two opposing ends of the scale as well, infatuation with self and then self-doubt, it's like almost this um, egotistical, polar opposite. like, mm -hmm. yeah, polar opposite, an egotistical side that is suffocated with self-doubt, but has to kind of like um, bring about an imbalance in order to, for you to feel fulfilled by yourself. Like that's super interesting. Um, and then even that, that you saying the root of that is pride is like, wow, that makes me have to check myself. <laughs> like, you know, do I get into that place of like uh, self-infatuation? In fact, yes. Why? Because I struggled a lot with narcissism. So I can completely understand what you're saying, but it was almost like that self-perversion side of me um, before coming to class. But anyway, this is not about me. This is about you, so right. <laughs> Um, but I just thought, you know, I connected with that right there, but it was an interesting, interesting way that you put it. Um, but yeah, okay, um, that sounds good. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more. Um, so tell us then, uh, bring us right back to the beginning, like your, most, your earliest memory um, of your childhood and where things started to really change for you in a way where you started to question things or um yeah yeah bring us right back to your childhood yeah so I feel like a lot of times I had put this in the back burner and I wouldn't really um think about it I think because in reality I wanted to just bury it um and not not focus on it because I felt that the shame would be too much to bear um but now I think it's the right time to mention it I think at a young age around seven years old, that's when I started express, um, exploring my sexuality, um, really getting into, just wanting to understand intimacy um, and going into routes of just lust. Um, I remember at a young age, I started becoming very sexually involved with my cousin. Um, and it was me just trying to figure out, oh, what is this that I see on TV where I was exposed to por pornography at a young age? And um, it, I feel like that was a turning point where it altered my perception of what love and intimacy should have been and made me feel like it was just confined within just 
the exploration of our bodies and um, just doing things no matter on impulse, no matter what the emotional um, emotional state was, you know. And a lot of times that was the emotional state was just me wanting to just act on impulse and me wanting to get things out. And so I remember it was th- with my cousin that my I experienced that for the first time, and then I extrapolated into doing it with other family members. Um, and I remember like when I was 13, I will never forget this, how I told my dad, I think that I'm a lesbian, you know? And his response, because my group as a Hebrew Israelite, and a lot of you guys probably don't know that, that doctrine and what they teach, but you know, homosexuality is a sin. And so being told at a young age, while I'm expressed exploring these things with my cousin, I should mention, she's a female, um, my female cousin, as well as my other family members who were fem- women as girls at that age as well, um, at that time. Uh, it was it was so shocking for me to hear my dad say um, that's unacceptable you're not just condemning me and not giving me a reason why not going back to the scriptures it was really just like you're it's just it's evil um, and you're not doing it um, and I, he probably did go back to the scriptures but at the time I just tried to like rush it off I was like yeah I don't really believe in this anyways um, and it hurt me though I remember because I was like I don't know how to get like all I know when it comes to intimacy is just exploring my body with women. That's all I know at this age. And so I just remember growing up um, in high school, it was, it was just this peer pressure to be liked, um, this peer pressure to fit in, this peer pressure to somehow identify with who I was that was really coerced through me being sexual, right? And I remember that um, it was when I was 16, this, the popular girl in the school was talking about how she lost her virginity for the first time. And I'm like, okay, you know, this, th- that sounds cool. What does that mean? You know, at this point, I haven't really been sexually involved where I lost my virginity. And so I'm like, you know, I need to figure out how to do this, like myself too. And then I lost my virginity. And the way I lost my virginity was very, very troubling for me because it also was traumatic. Um, I had slept with my best friend's interest like her the guy that she had a crush on at that time and when the whole school found out it was like I became the laughing stock it was like wow this girl was so desperate that she slept with her best friend's soon-to-be boyfriend like how dare she and so it really showed me that every idea of love and intimacy that I had as you can see at this point was just expressed through just me doing things that was of not of wholesome, of pure, of like confident nature, it was all coming from my insecurities. Um, and, you know, fast forwarding, fast forwarding, I'm 18 at this point, And my parents are like, okay, you need to find a way to get out because you're 18, da, da, da. And I started like really venturing into my education as being my outlet to leave. And then I get accepted to NYU. I get accepted to NYU, um, starting my first semester in college. And I just remember I had a, a great job. I was working at a, as a server, a bartender at this um, high profile um, hotel called Public in the city. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm living the life. I'm hang, hanging with the models, we're on yacht parties. Like I actually started my first um, club for black women where we could talk about critical issues uh, revolving around sexual trauma. And I'm seeing it flourishing. I'm like, yeah, God has, or, put me in a, a, a really great situation. I was able to leave that religion to find my own. And at this point is me exploring spirituality. I really get into tarot card reading. I was really getting into just feeling like this high sense of, of spiritual connection with the source, not knowing what the source was, but at that time it was like a higher power. Um, unknowingly that I was stepping into my mania so I actually was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And this is when my mania, manic episode, for many of you guys don't know, is a state of grandiosity where you feel so narcissistic or so elevated in self and like pride. Um, you don't, you lose touch with reality, basically. You just enter a fanatical world. And so this is me starting to enter that fanatical world unknowingly. And I remember all of a sudden I just lost my job because of impulse. I was like, yeah, I'm going to quit. I don't know how I'm gonna like move forward, but I'm gonna quit because I I had this I had this fear that I was gonna get fired. I don't know why. 
um, it does connect to the illness really kicking in. So I, I leave my job and then I'm like homeless. I'm like, okay, I stay at Airbnb. The woman takes me in. She's like, all you have to do is host for a little bit. Um, but you can stay, you know, you just stay here while you're hosting. My, my best friend at that time moves in, not the one from high school. This is another one I met at public who was my friend for a while. She was actually on this spiritual journey with me. Uh, we were literally learning about ourselves through each other. It became like a really emotional attachment relationship without me even knowing. Um, so we're living together, really getting to tarot card readings, do all these things. And then eventually I just start seeing things like, I think that my, that's when my reality started shifting and I started seeing actual demonic forces um, through my readings and through these different things. I'm like, yeah, like it felt at that moment like I was touching in, tapping into a spiritual realm that I shouldn't have never unlocked. And I remember telling myself, okay, I need to get out of this house. Like it's just, it's like the energy is just, it's really bad. And so I end up leaving again, act on impulse, not knowing where to go staying in Bob's library for two years straight. I mean, two weeks, two years, two weeks straight. Um, living in Bob, the Bob's library, literally living out of my suitcase with two suitcases with me, just pulling all nighters, trying to get my education, you know, um, progressed and like making sure that my, I'm doing well in school academically, but also doing well emotionally and mentally. And trying to balance all that while I'm literally living on the couches at the library. And I just remember my best friend at the time, she's like, Nita, this is not a good situation. I'm gonna help you find somewhere. She ends up helping me find somewhere. Her best, her friend at that time, her grandmother's house, she had a room and it was for rent. And I was able to get a loan from NYU, literally $500 a loan. And it was exactly how much I needed to move in. And I, at this point, I'm like, that was God. Like that was through the grace of God, amen, amen. Not really saying amen, but like really just like, okay, that was, you know, Ashe. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I end up like moving into the apartment. Really, just it's starting to elevate now. This level is really getting worse. Where I'm like, now it's not only at this time I was named my name is Sarah, so I identify as Sarah. I'm like, yeah, Sarah is confident. She's bold. She's doing. She's living the life, even though she's gone through a lot of troubles, trials and tribulations. I'm making it through through the grace of God. Um, but then it got to a point where now Sarah's believing she's on top of the world. And then it got to the point where I started comparing myself to that higher power, thinking I was the higher power. But I'll get to that point later. So um, I, I'm going through this series of, of, of homelessness um, where it's not like actually me sleeping on the streets, but it's me just like house hopping, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember that uh, my friends took me in because I, I lost my apartment again because I couldn't afford it. So I keep losing these apartments because I can't afford it. I'm trying to struggle, trying to, every time I get up, I fall down, right? And so I finally get up and I'm like, yeah, I'm living with my best friends in Queens. Um, they took me in and they were so supportive. Um, so I would never forget them. They were just amazing. Um, but I remember one time I had this, this is where my, um, I, I had this night where I was like, I felt myself talking to the spirits and apparently the spirits at this time told like what I thought was telling me, you need to go to London. Just go to London, pick up your bags and go to London because your twin flame, your soulmate is out there and you need to do this. You're, you're supposed to do this mission uh, to, to help save the world and you got to go out there. And I remember just feeling like, oh, you know, I got to pick up my bags and go out there. I booked a flight without no money back, like to travel back. And I went out there. And I was staying there for two days, literally roaming around London without having an itinerary. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just literally letting that, whatever I thought was calling me to guide me. It was so demonic. Uh, but I was literally feeling like, at this point when I reflect, I think I was being led by Satan, uh, to be real. Like he was literally who I was calling on. He was literally who, who I believed to be the higher power in me. Sorry. Um, so I remember going to London and just doing all these things and I had no way to get back. And I cried, I cried. I was like, please God help me. And I remember a family out of nowhere, they were just like, what's going on? Why are you crying in the middle of the, the airport? And I told them my story. I told them how I just didn't know how to get back. And I think they noticed that something was off. So they wanted to help me. 
and they were just like, here's this cash, just please get home. <laughs> and then they gave me cash and I was able to get back home. And I did the same mistake, but this time it wasn't to go to London, it was to go to California. I thought a voice told me again, pick up and go to California. This is your chance. It didn't work out before, but I'm gonna show you why it's gonna work out now, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, this is me acting on trust. Mm. This is me humbling myself. This is me doing all these things. And it's all, as you can see, it's all centered around love, emotional dependency. My life, all my trials and tribulations was formulated through lust, this emotional attachment to something out there. Um, and it always had to do with a, a guy. And so, or a woman when I was young. So I, yeah, I just, I just went to Cal, I went to the airport, didn't get the check paycheck that I needed to actually book my flight. And I'm staying in the airport for two weeks straight, two weeks because something in me, a spirit was telling me, you need to stay here. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. As you can see at this point, I'm mentally not okay. Right. I've reached a point of insanity where I believe that voice in my head is actually God, God speaking to me. I'm thinking that the higher power is guiding me. And I remember one day it got to the point, the voice in my head was so strong. It said, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. And I thought that was going to be a sacrifice. Like I said, you know what? I can't take this anymore. I'm literally starving for two weeks. I lost 10 pounds in a matter of two weeks because I was starving. I had no food, no money. And I went into the bathroom and I took a sharp, sharp stick. And I was saying, okay, if this is your will, let it be done. And I was ready to kill myself, but I felt something say, stop. Mm. It just said, stop. And I pulled out a poem and my, my my um, pocket and I read it, it was by Langston Hughes and it was just talking, I can't recall exactly what it meant at the time, but it was just something that helped um, me. It helped me really get touch with, um, touch base with reality. And I was like, wow, you know what? This is not okay, I need to go home. I went home to my, back to my fam friend's house and they were, they just noticed something was off because I kept talking about suicide. Like, I was like, I'm going to kill myself. There's no way for me to live anymore. I just can't. And they're like, basically, you need to get help. And then I remember I had to leave because they just couldn't take me in anymore. And I ended up staying in the shelter. Um, at this point, I, make my, my, I'm, I made my way to Harlem. And so I'm staying at this LGBTQ um, shelter. And that's when I started really exploring like the grandiosity because I meet this person who's there and he's like I'm on this mission too and for some reason like our our I our fanatical um way of thinking and or perspective on things actually correlated or, or it coincided with it with each other and it, it made me feel like okay everything that I felt and and, and understood is accurate because here's someone um, confirming it for me like here he is saying that he needs to go to London too and just all these different things I'm like okay now this is real this is God confirming it long story short um it's just uh these things are getting worse to the point where it led me to one day being in the, in the middle of like the sidewalk hovered over um hovering over myself and just crying and I remember I don't exactly recall how this happened but I made my way to the hospital and at this point everyone that I'm seeing is actually warped into like demonic figures my my vision became an elusive like I started I mean a, a, it was an illusion at this point right where everything I'm seeing now is actually not reality um so now it's not only mental it's actually physical and I get to the hospital and I just remember like just like hearing zaps and and feeling like just demonic forces and just feeling so dark. It felt so dark. That's how, the best way I can describe it. Mm -hmm. And I remember still feeling like something wanted me to kill myself. It kept telling me so much. You need to be that sacrifice because at this point, I'm like, okay, if I'm meant to be the sacrifice, then I'm, am I really Jesus? like and then it started to get to the point where I'm like yeah I think I'm Jesus and that's when I was hospitalized so I'm in a psych ward at this point and they're basically like you know injecting me with medicine and I start getting better like I start not no longer seeing these things um I leave the hospital 
my family finds out actually at this point they're like oh my gosh like you know you could you could come live with us I started living with my mother and my father for a little bit the depression kicks in now the depression like it's no longer mania it just felt depression by the way I'm bipolar so now you can see like the fluctuation right the pride how it correlates to the narcissism how it correlates to the grandiosity the 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 manic episodes then the depression the low self-esteem the insecurities um so yeah i'm starting to feel really insecure really de depressed and i'm like i need to just go back because while i was in the shelter i met this guy and he was actually homeless and so I just remember wanting to go back to live with him. And then I moved back to Brooklyn and I was living with my, uh, my other, my grandparents. And then I finally ended up moving with, moving in with my, um, that, that guy who became my boyfriend and he was bisexual. And so he was showing me a lot about, cause he would, he didn't, he felt shameful about who he was with his um, sexuality. And so I started feeling shameful about my sexuality. It was just like him mirroring all of my trauma like vomiting it back at me and just saying here it is like I want you to see yourself and it was triggering <laughs> that's the best way I can put it um and fast forward fast forward this is where I, it gets into me just being discipled um or baptized because one day I just remember it I just I was doing things like I was being sexually involved at this point but very risky um, I remember like, even though I was dating him, I was just like going out and doing these different things. And even before I started dating him, like before I moved to his house, I was, there was, there was like weeks at a time where I was just like sexually involved. And that's part of like the mania. Like you, you start doing the risky, you put yourself in risky situations, but mine's always revolved around sexual stuff. Right. Um, and so I just remember one day I said, enough is enough. Like I fell to my knees. I said, God, take me, please. I don't know who you are. I don't know, but you're just showing yourself in so many ways and I need your help, please. And I remember two days after that, not even, he just came in the house. He was like, pack up all your stuff. Actually, I'm throwing your stuff out now. He had called me actually. And he said, if you don't come back uh, back here in the next few minutes, your stuff's gonna be outside. And I just remember coming back and he just started throwing my stuff out. Cause we were having issues, but it got to the point where like, he just had like an outburst and he was like, get out. And literally, literally, literally. Yeah. So uh, Lauren, a disciple at that time, part of my church now, ICC, she was making her way to her apartment upstairs and she saw what was going on. And she was like, what, what's going on? And I just was like, I don't know. He's just throwing all my stuff out, please help. And two days, two days after this whole situation going on, I have a major photo shoot. As you guys, you probably don't know, um, this is photo shoot that I, I was running like a campaign, it's called Black Boys Blues. So just to give you like a story of how it actually happened, two days before that I was homeless, like th through the making of that I was homeless, right? And so two days prior to that, I'm being told by my boyfriend, get out. And so Lauren sees what's going on. She's like, pack up your, pack up your stuff, just make your way upstairs, we'll figure it out. I come upstairs, she's like, I want you to know this was not by chance. This was not by coincidence, this was God's plan. And it just, I felt that like, I felt, I just felt chills because I was like, no, she's, I prayed about this. And she's like, I prayed about, like, I, I know this is not by chance because I, my, something in my spirit kept telling me, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Don't, this is Lauren speaking. Don't leave yet. Leave your house, like get, go to the supermarket. It will happen the way it needs to. And she ended up leaving at that time because she had a stomach ache, you know, something kept making her not leave. And so she, she leaves and she said, that's when I met you. If, it, if I didn't meet you in that split second, none of this would happen. We would not be sitting here today. And I just remember her getting me, helping me get an Airbnb so I can manage because I told her about my photo shoot and stuff like that. And so I just remember like after that, we started doing Bible studies. Um, I finally got an apartment um, because some money out of nowhere came in and helped me with the photo shoot. That's how I was able to do it. Y'all know the um, unemployment. Yeah, that, that kicked in. And so <laughs> I got my apartment. I'm living. I'm like, whoa, like God is actually. So at this point, God is actually showing me the blessings. And I'm not even baptized yet, but he's mm -hmm. gradually showing me like, this is what could be if you just accept me, yeah. you know? Um, and so now I'm like, whoa, my life is changing all from meeting Warren. Wow. Like, ever since I've been my life is just changing. It gotta be a higher power. Like, it gotta be God. 
And so I was in the Bible studies and I remember my pride started kicking in. Like, cause I was like, you know what? I know God, God's showing me all the blessings. I don't need y'all. Why do I need these Bible studies? And I remember every time I would go to the Bible study, they would say something so convicting to the point where I'm like, did they just read my mind? How do you know? Those, how do you know? How did the Bible know that I was thinking that? And that's what really got me um, to become a disciple today. And it was just so convicting to the point where I couldn't deny it. And I remember one day I just cried and I confessed my sins. I told everything, my addiction to weed, my addiction to sex, my addiction to all these different things. And I eventually got baptized. And then looking back, I also remembered a time, I didn't mention this, but time that I was like, you know, physically, I was raped. Um, during my time, I was just being so sexually involved. And I didn't put two and two together until recently during my, um, in my discipleship, that that was also a turning point. Because I realized that for so long, I was looking in the mirror and I was seeing a woman who was so embedded in lust. And what that was, was emotional dependency and trust in men and never in God. And that's why I had so much pride because it was always in someone else other than him. And now he's teaching me surely, I don't want to say slowly, it's all perfect timing, but surely what it is to love and truly love um, through him and being able to do that. Now I can love on a deeper capacity, you know, men in gen general, like women and men, and just men, human humans, mm -hmm. um, his people, you know, and it's just been a beautiful experience because it shows, it's showing me every day, like what my bipolar disorder looks like. It, it, it's not really disorder. It was like, as you guys saw, it's not psychological. It, it became physiological. It became all these different things. It was warped into my trauma. It was me battling the highs and the lows because I didn't know the difference between lust and love. Like, you know, it was just always that battle. But now I'm finding common, I'm finding, um, I'm finding the narrow road and I'm finding myself on my way home. And that's my story. Wow. All right. One second. <laughs> Get the lights in. <laughs> I'm giving dark around here. Wow. So I like, I'm, I'm blown. I'm blown away. Like, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm literally speechless. I'm just thinking about your Bible talks, and you know, obviously, when you tell, tell your story in your Bible talks and stuff, and just how people would react to it as well. Like, I'm just like, wow, look at God. You know, the fact that Lauren actually lived, like, you say in the same apartment. In the same apartment. What are the odds, right? The same a <laughs> uh, disciple. <laughs> And now she's on the mission team. Like she moved to Philadelphia literally right after I became baptized. She was, that's another reason why she, we know it wasn't a coincidence. Like she was meant to live in that apartment just to meet me. Like she said, what she said that? What if it was just to meet you? And I truly believe that. Wow. Wow. Acts, Acts 17. Um yeah, I'm so blown away, away by this testimony. I just, I, I don't, my head, I've got so many questions. <laughs> my head's spinning right now. And you know what? I'm just so, so happy, you know, that God was in control the whole time. So happy, you know, because now you're here and you're speaking to me. You know, we met like randomly as well on Instagram, like, and I was just super intrigued by your 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 IG actually. Like I just saw that you were quite a deep person, you were creative as well. And I was like, hmm, I want to get to know you a little bit more. So you was a disciple as well. I was like, wow, you know what I mean? So um I'm glad that I've like now been given a chance to hear this. And this is going to definitely inspire so, so many people because um i think about new age spirituality and i think you know um we don't even know the doors that we're opening you know when we go through those you know um 
those stages of our lives. We don't re really know what's beyond us until we actually start to study the Bible. Um, and then we, you, you mentioned about feeling like a sense of darkness surrounding you as well. And instantly I related because I also remember when I was in that place, like it was just dark for me. And it was like, there was no, there's no way for me to escape. And I was like, what is this? I, I couldn't shake the feeling, completely related there as well. And now I'm like, I don't feel too alien <laughs> because we, I feel like we kind of like go, we're, we're being tempted into these places by Satan, you know, and um, we walk throughout those temptations. Um, we say yes to these temptations, we give in to them and we want more. We want more and we want more, you know, and then God's word comes in and, you know, it's like your soul begins to yearn for God's word, you know, once it gets a little taste of it, like you said, those convictions that you were getting, you were still going back to the Bible studies, even though you, you had a little bit of pride, you was like, uh, you still went back, but the fact that you was being convicted in those studies as well, you was, you was being humbled as well, yeah. you, was, you know, it got you to this place of saying, you know what, I'm going to surrender because clearly, what I was doing in the past was completely different from God's will, you know, and I think it's such a beautiful journey that you're on now, and I can, I can really see your maturity levels, I can see how much, you know, um, you, you're glowing, so I, like you're glowing, you know, I mean, you, I mean, I, I'm, I've not known you before, but I can just see the blackening already, you know, and I know that's 100% the Holy Spirit, um, I'm so, so, so happy, like, you know, I had this opportunity is, is there anything that anything uh, or shall I say any encouraging words that you'd like to share you know with someone who may be going through this or has gone through this and you know yeah yeah any encouraging words yeah when you let God become the love of your life the only man that you will ever see before anyone um, at the altar right that taking that hand in marriage, it truly transforms your life. It transforms not only your heart, your spirit, but your mind as well. And for the people out there who feel like they're so lost in their mental illness, God is the, that God is the, the, the remedy. He's the medicine that we need. He truly is everything that it takes to get better. He, you know, in the scriptures, it says, he told, he asked a man who was, who was, um, you know, he, he was invalid, right? He invalid, he couldn't, he couldn't move. He said, do you wanna get well? Mm. And so I wanna encourage all the women out there, ask yourself, do you wanna get well? Because the answer is right there in the Bible. You know, it's through God, it's by taking his hand in marriage that you truly become well. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, wow. Thank you so much, Sawyer, honestly. That hit me hard. I can't lie. <laughs> that hit me hard. Um, thank you for sharing that. Do you, where can people find you um, if they want to, like, you know, get in touch with you? Obviously, you're based in New York, right? Yes. Yeah. Where, where can people find you if they wanted to reach out? Um, Instagram is the best way to reach out. Um, it's Sarai, Sarai Studio. So S A R A I, two, two times, Sarai, Sarai studios with an s underscore and my youtube channel that i just started please like and subscribe you know show some support and love it's sarai sarai but that's where you can find me on social media man thank you so much for that again um yeah i mean without further ado again guys if you uh want to connect with sarai you've heard it there you know and even if you want to Bible study and you guys are based in New York or you're based, you know, somewhere around New York and you want to know more about God's word, you know, you want to know more about, you know, how to really find peace and joy in your life, like get in touch with survive. If you're based in the UK, get in touch with myself. Um, you know, again, it is about seeking God wholeheartedly and that will be fine. I would enjoy And with that being said, guys, um, drop your comments like subscribe i also got the link down below for um Soraya's youtube channel guys so yeah go and show her to support her in love as well and we'll see you
Ready to get by this.